seven months ago, this feature was merged into Mesa. Add a video codec support option. So now by default, patent encumbered video codecs like H.264, H.265 and VC1 are disabled by default. To enable them, you need to go and add this build option and pick and choose which ones you want to add. This opened a giant can of worms because not long after this, distros like Fedora stopped shipping and code and decode on H.264 and H.265 and decode on VC1 basically breaking it with AMD GPUs. Now, not breaking the codec entirely, because on NVIDIA and Intel, they do it slightly differently. On AMD systems, it pushes it to software rendering, which is vastly less efficient. And at the time, I did a video on this. But Fedora is run in a remotely sensible way, so even though there was some debate over whether this would happen or not, now in RPM Fusion, there is a Mesa Free World package which supports these codecs and everything is good to go. It's just not shipped by default with the distro. And then not long after this, OpenSUSE did the exact same thing and drop these codecs. And being these corporate focused, corporate centric distros, or at least owned or operated by companies that go and do this, it's still really dumb that this change was made, but it's understandable that they don't want these projects to be a liability for the more corporate US based stuff that they're also doing. And I expected this to be the end of it. We would never hear about the codec situation again it would be done. Oh, how wrong I was. So the Arch team saw this change and basically said, this hasn't been an issue this entire time. It's been by default available in Mesa and nobody's ever gotten sued for patent infringement. So it's still not an issue now. I don't know why anybody is actually caring. And in their package build, they have gone and re-enabled the codex. So surely, no Arch-based distro would go and disable it. You're watching a video right now. Let's start with a system that I don't talk about as often. The Steam Deck and SteamOS 3. So the first version of Mesa to include these new options is Mesa 22.2. And there have been a bunch of updates to SteamOS since that version of Mesa came out. But nothing on the Steam Deck had gone and changed. That was until SteamOS 3.4. Latest preview breaks hardware decoding. This preview came out back in November. The preview is basically like a canary build, the beta build, the version you try out before it ships out to the regular users. Now, H.264 and H.265 are very important for the Steam Deck because of Steam Remote Play, basically running the game on a PC and then streaming it over to your Steam Deck. This was not functioning. Now, Valve knew about this problem since mid-November, and there are a lot of people in here basically going over the pattern issues and maybe what Valve can do, but nobody from Valve actually coming in and saying what their plan going forward actually is. So eventually, it made its way to stable and shipped out to the regular users. But here's the funny thing. None of the regular users were talking about it because 3.4 didn't last very long. 3.4 was an incredibly buggy update and broke tons of Steam Deck features. Whether that be things like changing the SD card file paths, completely breaking software like Emu Deck, whether it be completely balking most, if not all, EAC anti-cheat games, and breaking audio if the device sleeps and you have it plugged into an external monitor. The fact that hardware decoding wasn't working is a minor footnote. So this update made its way to stable on the 22nd of December. 
and did not live very long. If you go all the way down to the bottom, there is this footnote here saying, this update was re-released as 3.4.1 to address a regression in how SD cards were handled, and again as 3.4.2 to fix an issue with HDMI slash DisplayPort audio going to sleep after being idle on external displays. They had to release two quick fixes for how broken this update was. And during these quick fixes, they didn't mention it. Like, it wasn't mentioned there at all. They fixed the hardware decode issue. Steam remote players working like it should, and someone went and ran VA info on their Steam Deck, and yet yeah, the codecs are now there. So, what exactly was going on? I don't think this is a case where this is something malicious or even their legal team saying that they shouldn't be shipping this. I think this might be a case of incompetence. So I didn't mention this before, but Mesa 22.2 is the version being shipped with the 3.4 series along with 3.4.2. As I said, this is the first version to ship these options. Before this update, the options didn't exist and the features were compiled in by default. I have a feeling someone updated the source code and didn't update the package build. And then they were like, oh no, <laughs> we need to go and do that. Didn't mention that it was broken in the first place and just quietly dealt with it. Now there was always the option to recompile Mesa for the Steam Deck or install the Arch package directly. The issue is being an immutable distro, the next Steam Deck update would have just wiped out that change. So it's a really good thing that Valve went and made this choice. Even if there is still that pattern issue, there is no excuse on a hardware device being sold to users that you wouldn't go and just pay for the patents. Okay, the Steam Deck issue is one thing and seems like a mistake. Surely there's not an Arch-based distro that follows along with Fedora and OpenSUSE. Have a look at the video length. Manjaro. <laughs> Manjaro. Of course it's Manjaro. Why wouldn't it be Manjaro? No one talked about this when it happened. It completely slipped under my radar. Once again, this is only an issue for AMD GPUs. If using NVIDIA or Intel, the codecs are handled completely separately. But as for Manjaro, up until a couple of weeks ago, the Mesa and Lib32 Mesa, as they should be, were coming directly from Arch Linux. But then, seemingly out of nowhere, these packages arise. This is a Mesa and Lib32 Mesa package in the Manjaro repos. And surely, nothing bad is going to happen when these packages are made. If you look at the history, it doesn't seem like anything bad's going on. And initially, it was just a copy of the Arch Linux package, even having those codecs enabled. And then shortly after, things started to get a bit weird. It got removed. Okay, fair, they're going to remove it. And then it got added back again. And then it got removed. Now you might think this is like a bunch of people arguing over whether this should be done. This was by Philip. This was by Philip. This was by Philip. So the same person disabled it and re-enabled it multiple times. Now the brain havers among you might be asking a simple question. Why? Why was it removed like this? Why was it not just added or removed? And I'm asking the exact same question because Philip never explained it and a different Philip was asking the same question. Was this intended? Maybe we should go back to the other package. No one knows why it was being removed like this. But as long as we ignore all the middle steps, there is at least an explanation on the removal itself. Manjaro as a company has from the beginning been separated from the Manjaro distribution but as more and more consumer targeting entities partner up with Manjaro GmbH that means devices shipping Manjaro 
the legal concerns become more present, especially for entities located in the US. The European copyright law is very strict, and there's very little room for interpretation, and this is likely a concern for entities using Manjaro through their financial transactions with Manjaro GmbH while supplying the operating system to end users directly. Once again, that is shipping computers running Manjaro. The approach Manjaro team has taken, although not in favor of the community, is a better safe than sorry approach, and while it may be undesirable in some aspects, it is an unfortunate consequence of software patterns. There isn't really much to do if they want to play it safe, I can only respect the team for their decision. Which makes sense at least at the face of it, but if you think a little bit deeper, it kind of falls apart pretty quickly. It makes sense for Fedora to do this. Fedora is very strict about what they will and will not ship to users. But if your issue is with software patterns and what you're allowed and not allowed to ship out to end users, you should stop shipping all of the patent encumbered software that Manjaro was already shipping. And I have my doubts that Manjaro is actually going to do this, so this seems more like a half measure to be in line with what Fedora said they're doing, but without doing the rest of what Fedora is doing to make this move actually make sense. For Fedora, Mesa was the last thing they had where it could be a potential pattern issue in the future. Getting rid of that last thing, I can understand why you would do that. But getting rid of one of this giant horde and then not getting rid of the rest, I don't know what you're doing besides just throwing things at the wall. So at this point, if you want these codecs working properly on Manjaro, there is three options available. The first one is modifying your own package build and then going and compiling Mesa. You can get this to interact with the Arch build system to make it work like a regular package. Basically, it's a local AUR package. Second option, go and install something like Mesa Git from the AUR. Now, I would highly recommend against doing this because you're basically playing Russian roulette with your system. If at some point a bad patch is pushed up to Mesa, well, um, your system is now probably going to die. The third option, which is probably the best thing to do, is go and modify your Pac-Man config and don't download Mesa from the Manjaro repos. Instead, download it from the Arch repos. Or another option is using a distro actually based on Arch. Something like Endeavor, Arco, and things like this, where they don't have this massive set of packages that go against what Arch is doing. That would be my solution, but do whatever you want. At least on the bright side, Philip is asking the question, should we actually be doing this? A week ago, should we fall back to the Arch package? Yes, you probably should. If you don't know why you're doing this, just stop doing it. Why are you even doing it if you don't have an answer? Do you want to know the best thing about this whole codex situation? Debian. The distro known to care about every little thing that could be a problem. Debian doesn't care. A while back, they re-enabled the codex fixing this issue. 22.2.0 breaks VARPI hardware encoding. Currently on Debian SID, upgrading to Mesa VA drivers version 22.2 breaks VARPI hardware accelerated encoding, at least on AMD GPUs. And they posted all this stuff about what's going on, oh look at this giant log, trying to explain why it's going on. And when we get down to the comments, one day, oh my god this is a giant log, where are the comments? Looks like in new Mesa, you have to explicitly enable codec support for the ones that are patent encumbered. Assuming there are no legal issues so far, I assume the only blocker here is the little change to the build options? I can confirm that making the following modification fixes the issue. I don't think this can be enabled since Debian does not allow distributing software encumbered by patents. But Debian already has been enabling this codex for many years. You have been able to use H.264 and H.265 VARPI codecs on Debian stable for a very long time. The only change was that now you need to explicitly opt in to enable building these codecs while they were automatically built before. 
changing a build flag to enable a feature that was already there in a previous version should not compromise Debian's stance. And it doesn't because they went and added the build options and now it's not a problem. But even though the video is ending, don't think this is going to be the end of the issue. It is going to come back again and again and again. You are going to see more random distros disabling this codec support just because of a potential pattern issue that has been in Mesa for years now that nobody cared about until the build option was added. I totally understand from a legal perspective why some of these distros care about it. But if it wasn't an issue for all of these years when it was automatically built, it's probably not an issue now. Not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. Go speak to an actual lawyer. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think we're going to hear more about this codec issue or do you think this is going to be the end of it? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, suddenly bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.